You might be financially abused if, here are some signs, if you're with someone who sabotages your stability, feels entitled, avoids accountability, is self-indulgent and self-serving, is parasitic, is controlling, lies and steals. Let's dive a little bit deeper. What does that look like? Sabotaging stability. Well, this would be somebody who sabotages you trying to increase your marketability in the workplace, right? Maybe you're trying to take a test while you're in school and they want to pick a fight with you right then and there. This could be somebody who's constantly changing jobs, locations, residences, everything is disposable to these people. They withhold necessities, grocery money, light bill money, rent payments, health care, ha haircut money, you name it, you know, to do with the, the bare necessities of life. They withhold that money from you. They make you feel guilty for asking for what you need and they force you to justify your spending while well, they don't do it for you because they earn more money than you, they have more resources than you, or you're just dependent on them, or frankly, they're just too special for that. <laughs> you know, this is the same person who may have pressured or encouraged you to quit your job, but now they feel entitled to tell you how to spend the money. You have to go ask for permission and they owe you nothing. You, they owe you no explanation, no transparency or accountability at all. Why? Because they feel entitled, right? They feel entitled to your money, your assets, your financial information, but not vice versa. It doesn't work both ways. This same person might monitor your expenses, your phone calls. They can surveil phone records on your phone bill. They can interrogate you about where you were at such and such time based on tracking. Maybe they put tracking on your phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this person can make unilateral decisions about joint finances while expecting full transparency from you. They can open credit cards, bank accounts, lines of credit, car loans without your knowledge. And like I've said before, your resources are going to get tapped first. There's last, if ever. <laughs> they can max out credit cards or use them without permission. It could be your credit cards or your family's credit cards. And then when confronted, they don't say, I'm sorry, how can I make this right? How can I repay you? No, 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 no. These are not words or actions that you're going to hear from this kind of person. Because they feel entitled to have that access. They feel that they should have just been given that money. They should have had to ask for it. They will drain bank accounts without your knowledge till the bank calls about NSF charges and shuts off the account. They will default on accounts through the bank or through credit, ruining your credit, blocking your ability to get your own bank account and financing in your own name. Same with renting homes and evictions on your records. And even years later, if you've divorced and then they don't pay child support and, you know, God forbid something happens and you can't keep your home because you were not getting child support, well, they don't see how their lack of paying for their children culminated in you losing your home and getting evicted. It's not their problem. You should have figured that out on your own. That is honestly how they feel about it. They avoid accountability. You know, you might be financially abused if you're with somebody who avoids accountability. They have visibility of all your finances, but you don't have access to theirs. There's no transparency. Sure, you know, they might put on a good show, but inevitably something happens where, well, gee, I lost my pay stub, so you can't see how much they got paid last paycheck. Or they lose receipt of payment for the bill, so you can't have any proof that they actually paid it. Oh, it got lost in the mail. They shorted me money on my paycheck. Really, they called in sick and they played hooky. Oh, my car was stolen. No, it was actually repoed. Games, games, games with these people. It's all about deflection. They'll have you believing that they have the worst luck ever. Poor me with an evil, evil grin. 
They're going to play the poor me card. They will intercept mail so you don't know about overdue unpaid bills or new bills or increased spending. They're going to limit your access in some way to account information. If it's online bill paying or online banking, they might change the passwords. They're going to find a way to hide the bills, hide and circumvent transparency. Anytime you bring up money with these people, just talking about money brings up arguments or a fear of an argument. So over time, you learn to self-censor. You learn, oh, don't say that. Oh, oh, maybe don't bring this up or don't bring it up over here because if this person has a stellar meltdown, right? Like, you, you know, <laughs> you start managing their emotions for them so that you don't have some violent outburst. And what they do is they train you to not confront them. They intimidate you when you do. And they teach you a lesson that if you confront me again, you will be punished. I'm going to have a rage session here. I'm going to retaliate. This is a person who dodges accountability in conversations. You might ask for money, they might agree to it, and then they avoid giving it or they procrastinate about giving it or they just change the subject. There's no follow through with this individual. Like what you see is never what you get. You might be financially abused if you're dealing with someone who is self-indulgent and self-serving. They might live in the home with you. You share a home together, but they refuse to help with the upkeep of the household. And it could be the handyman stuff. It could be chores, just daily chores. They might, in fact, go out of their way to make housework for you. Like if you have an arrangement where you're a stay-at-home mom or dad and they're leaving the home to get the income, well, they feel that entitles them to treat you like a servant. And you, and you will see this in really subtle ways like, uh, I remember I, I had this pattern every night where about 10, 20 minutes before I went to bed, I would tidy up the house. So the next morning I'd wake up, everything was, you know, clean slate. And he would be the first to wake up in the morning and make himself cereal. And he wouldn't shut any cabinet door or drawer that he had to open in order to make himself cereal. He would leave the cereal box out on the countertop rather than put it back in the pantry sit and go eat the cereal, the bowl of cereal at his desk and leave it there. Like you pick up after me. And I had to tell him at one point, you know, this arrangement of me being a stay at home mom is not about me picking up after things that you should be picking up after yourself. You're actually making work for me and it's demoralizing. It's offensive. This is the kind of stuff that they will do. Again, it, it kind of ties into the entitlement issues. Also, wasteful, extravagant spending. Having donuts and gourmet coffee every morning. Going to costly convenience stores and buying snacks every day, even when you're trying to make the rent and you have food at home for this. They cannot self-regulate. They can't tell themselves no. Their internal controls are shot. They'll control anybody but themselves. And you might see signs of this through gluttony. This might be a person who has visible evidence that they cannot tell themselves no with food, with drinking, you name it. Hoarding, buying, shopping addictions. I mean, fill in the blank. I'm not saying that everybody who overeats is a narcissist, but what I'm saying that it can be a telltale sign if you're seeing a person who has other signs in their life that they cannot self-regulate in a healthy way, you're probably going to get it in the relationship as well. Another example is they won't get a job or they quit theirs and they insist on starting an untimely business instead. I've talked about that before. They will justify major purchases as necessary for starting their new business, even if it means neglecting family needs. Oh, well, you know, I don't have a job anymore because he walked off of it, right? Or got fired or whatever. 
I don't have a job anymore, so I just have to start a new business. I just, I, I have to make an income and, well, we're going to have to invest in this. And then you can't pay bills because they put the money on something to start a business instead. And they expect the family, maybe even force the family to pull together for their cause, their dreams, their goals on demand, no matter what the cost to others. The same person may expect you to work for the family business without pay. They might have secret stashes of money. They might get loans from your family to finance these grand plans that they have, but then they don't repay them. You might be financially abused if the person you're with is parasitic. They create crises through their irresponsibility, lack of integrity, from which you are forced to liquidate your assets your savings accounts, your vehicle, your possessions for survival, thereby rescuing yourself, your children, and most notably them. For example, legal fees to get and keep them out of jail so that they don't lose their job and they can get back to work on Monday. But then what happens is they quit their job. And this is also that they get and keep their job so you can keep the lights on and keep a roof over your children's head. Saving your children ends up saving them, basically. And this is their saving grace. Because if it wasn't for the kids, maybe you would dip out of there. Another way that they can be parasitic is that they just simply don't respect things of value or things of importance to you, such as heirlooms, hard-earned possessions, things that you saved and worked hard to get, uh, children's furniture, leaving it behind, uh, maybe because they keep moving around and maybe they couldn't afford to move it or maybe they put it in a storage unit and then they couldn't afford to pay the storage unit. So everything is dump and discard, even with possessions with these people. They have no emotional attachments. All resources can be replenished elsewhere. Supply can be easily replaced by the narc. If they lost it, they can get it back again. Everything is disposable with these people. They use your children's social security numbers to obtain child income tax credit on taxes and then withhold payout from you saying that you don't deserve it. They refuse to follow a budget even after agreed upon. They waste or hoard money. Either way, there is an imbalance in the power dynamic of the relationship of an empowered person versus an, a disempowered person. Everything's a dog and pony show with these people. Financially, what you see is not what you get. They refuse to pay bills. They misappropriate bill paying money on self-indulgences without agreement or consent. For example, you might have a bill come in that you've got to pay for your prenatal care for a pregnant wife, you know, but it gets spent on a two door sports car instead. Can you believe this? And then they're shocked when they get confronted. This person could starve you out financially to gain leverage in furthering their agenda. For example, not paying child support, evading court orders for years, hoping to drain you emotionally and financially so that you surrender the kids to him or her without ever having to go to court. You might be financially abused if you are with someone who is controlling. They handle, let's say, all the income tax filing documents. They expect you to blindly sign it or face dealing with them flying into a fit of rage because they expect you to just blindly trust them despite their history of lies and unaccountability. Then they'll have the income tax return deposited into their account so that you have to go to them for the money. They might even spend that money, a fraction of it, the return, on you as they see fit and then retain the rest of it for themselves. And they're very satisfied that it was fair. No talk of how you agree to spend it. They're going to tell you how that income tax return is spent without any accountability whatsoever. Tracking victims, I mentioned this before, GPS, um, finding out your whereabouts, um, looking at online banking, looking at phone records, who you called and maybe from where, from what location, demanding that all financial gifts and inheritance be placed in their name or signed over to their name. You might not have any choice at this point because you can't cash uh, any any 
monetary inheritance given into you because you don't have a bank account anymore and you don't have a bank account anymore because they ruined your bank credit. Makes large purchases or puts bills in their name or with their name first so that they can say, I paid for this, you have no right to it. And the same with housing, making sure that the housing is put in their name so that you can't legally kick them out of the house, but they can kick you out, especially if your name's not on it. Have you sign your checks over to them or direct deposit those checks into their account so that you have no access to the money? Assets, properties are in their name as well. The debts are in your name. And this is what keeps you hostage. Let me repeat that again. They put assets and property in their name while they put debts in your name. This is what keeps you hostage. They increase debt and then lie about it when discovered so that you can't leave. You're trapped. Alternatively, there are situations where the person will delegate financial duties as if you are his or her secretary, and then they expect you to handle it as they wish, where basically you do all the work, they reap the financial reward. It's almost like you're their secretary and you have to answer them. And finally, you might be a victim of financial abuse. If you're dealing with someone who lies and steals, they, for example, pretend to go to work after losing a job, pretend to pay bills until that eviction comes or the lights get turned off, then the family's in shock, unprepared, and have nowhere to turn. The family might have just dug themselves out of the last hole the narc created or finally started feeling secure after the last episode only for it to happen again. This happens over and over again because the narc never learns. I've said this in my book. Usually the narcs can maintain the facade of I'm healed, I've recovered, I've repented, I've restored this situation. This, this facade can go on for six months before the mask falls off again. And what's under the mask is that this person has never changed. The mask was pretending to have changed, like faking basically having false epiphanies and false recoveries this facade can go on for up to six months in extreme cases you will see this person relapse one to two months or within three months but it could take as long as six months for this person to relapse again and if again if 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 they're playing on your guilt and your conscience, well, you just don't trust me. I've been proving myself. And then as soon as you start giving them more free reign and not having to require so much accountability and transparency from them, then they, they start exploiting this all over again because the, the facade of, of having the fake epiphany, the fake recovery is all to get you back disarmed so that you can do it. They can do it all over again. This could be a person who engages in fraud, also creating false bank statements, IDs to gain approval for housing, car loans, and more opportunities that they just don't honestly qualify for because they're unstable. They can lose or claim to lose money that's been loaned from others or they'll misappropriate it. Oops, I don't know what happened to it. Oh, well, it went over there. Gee, how did that happen? I don't know. You know, again, plain stupid and they're very aware. They just don't care. Finally, yeah, you know, another way they lie and steal is they could, they could take thousands from you. But think you should look the other way because of that one time that you took a hundred dollars from them. This is a very, these people have a very skewed idea of reality and justice. It is very distorted. If you want to watch the next video in this series, then click here. Or if you want to watch my narcissism playlist, click here. Also, if you're interested in my book on narcissism, check it out at Amazon, Audible, Kindle. Links are down below. Till next time, thanks for watching, commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing.